Around a year ago, I built this gate for access into my paddock area, but that was before I bought my ride on mower and trailer, which is now too wide to go through this gate, would you believe? So I've had to open up another span to gain access for my new toy. So today's project is to build a bigger gate for this and then get rid of that one, which is rather annoying. <laughs> Just before we get on with this build, I thought I'd show you my thought process. Right, this is what I've got at the moment, which is the fence, the small gate, an opening where I've just taken down the 4x2s that used to form the fence, and then the rest of the fence that goes off to the right-hand side. This small gate is now too small for my ride on lawnmower, so the small gate just doesn't work, so I can forget that. So my thought process was, the easiest thing to do is to build a gate in here, eight foot wide, about a metre high, no problem. There we go, something like that. But whenever I see a gate like this in my area, the one thing I do notice is that it's always hanging off a really chunky post, normally six by six inches and probably a metre or so into the ground. And all I have is old four by four timbers coming out there as the posts, which are, how do I put it, not in the best condition, they're split, and definitely this one isn't even vertical. So what was holding me back was just the idea of trying to hang all of this weight off one of these posts, and I sort of know that in time the post is going to fail, and I couldn't really see a solution to it. However, this is where my wife stepped in and came up with the brilliant solution of actually making this gate into two, so therefore just cutting it in half and making it two smaller gates joining in the middle. So you can use one as a personnel gate and you can open the other one if I use my lawnmower, which is just a brilliant solution and it just puts so much less load on each of these posts that each of these posts are gonna take these gates without a problem because they're very similar in size to the one I've already put up. Unluckily for me, the one I put up originally is just a couple of inches too short so I'm gonna to have to make these ones else I would have just moved one over. So these are the two gates I'm gonna make. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a feature in there because my wife would quite like one of those latches that goes across the top. So I'm gonna have the tops flying over and then just round it off nicely. I'm gonna be making these gates out of CLS C16 timber which is a little bit more expensive than the timber I can buy in my local wood yard However, that's completely ungraded and it tends to come out really wet from the treated process. C16 means that it's a certain strength and it's got a lack of knots and it's just nice to work with. I've made all my other gates out of the same type of timber and they've held up quite nicely and I think over the years it's going to twist less and split a lot less than the local stuff. So I'm going to need timber, I'm going to need hinges, ironmongery, coach bolts, all that sort of stuff. So I think I better get in the car. With most of the components in hand and a couple on their way via Amazon, I measure the fence accurately, which means I know exactly now what size I need to build it. In the workshop, I start by trimming the ends of all the eight foot four by twos, and then everything to length, leaving an extra six inch on the uprights, which will allow me to round off the tops of them. I use an offcut to mark the half-lap joint positions, and today I'm trying a slightly different technique, 
where I trench cut the end of the joint so I know where the end is and then take the majority of the waste away on the band saw and then go back to the mitre saw and use a trench cut facility to essentially clean up the face. I don't know if this is any quicker. I did get faster at doing it and it does leave you with a sort of pre-prepared joint without having to clean it up with a chisel. For some of the joints, I still had to use the traditional way because the uprights, the tops fly past. So there's no way of actually getting the band saw in. And doing it this way is actually more satisfying, although it does mean you need to clean up more with a chisel. So the choice is yours which way you decide to go. Now, that was a couple of hours of getting extremely dusty, I must say. So you would have just seen me rounding off these edges here. And the reason for that is, I'll show you, when two of these pieces are put together, because this CLS timber that I've got has actually got rounded edges, you've got a rounded edge on one side, and if you don't round off the other edge, you actually end up with something straight which looks a little bit strange. So this is a little trick that I learnt off of Keith from Rag and Bone Brown, is that you actually, rather than leaving a straight edge here, you round that over, and then you've got two rounded over edges, which makes it look like you've done it on purpose, rather than leaving just one square and one rounded. So I think that is a nice little trick, actually. So most of this is done. I've still got the cutouts, the round over of the top posts to do. Once I've done that, then I can start thinking about gluing up. The uprights I want to protrude upwards by around 75mm or 3 inches with a rounded finish and as I can't seem to find my compass at the moment I find something else convenient to the right diameter to draw the half circle. I then take off the majority of the waste material with the band saw which doesn't quite make it around the small radius curve with the blade that I've got so I just take off as much as I can in almost straight lines. I can then use my sander to sneak up on the line, which gives quite a nice finish, albeit with a very square edge. To round over this edge, I use my router with a very small round over bit to replicate the edges you get on this C16 wood. After everything getting a good sand in, I was then in a position for a glue up. So that first one went together quite nicely. 
and although I've measured the diagonals and it's absolutely spot on, that's not a coincidence because I actually lined this first upright with the side of my bench and this bottom piece exactly with the bottom of my bench and I know that's a 90 degree so if that lines up then the chances are it's there or thereabouts straight off. You would have seen that I've immediately screwed it in. The screws are now acting as clamps so I don't need any clamps on this. And for the second one, I'm going to build it exactly on top of the first. That way, I know that even before I measure the diagonals, it's going to be around about there or thereabouts. Every now and again, I do get some comments about how many tools I use. And if you've got a lot of power tools, you'll already know this. But maybe if you're a new DIYer, you might not. I've got three tools here that I'm using. One with a drill, one with a can sink, and an impact driver to push in these screws. You can do all of that just with one tool. And for many, many years, I didn't have more than one tool. But the only thing is, you've got to keep interchanging the bits for the countersink for the screw attachment. So if you do have more than one tool, it just makes life a lot easier and quicker if you can have a different bit in each one and then just use it one, bang, bang. If you haven't, then that's okay. in Budapest, my, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beauty focus, E-O-U, oh, you, oh, I leave it all. Pretty good, pretty good. My eager silver land, I've achieved, it may be hard for you to stop and believe, but for you, oh, you, oh, I leave it all. Over you, who you, who I leave it all. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. Baby, if you owe me, then all of this will go away. My many artifacts, the list goes on. If you just say the words, I'll up and run on to you. Ooh, you, ooh, I leave it all. Oh, to you, ooh, ooh, I leave it all. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. Family, they don't understand. They fear they'll lose so much if you take my hand. But for you, ooh, you, ooh, I'd lose it all. Ooh, for you, ooh, you, ooh, I'd lose it all. Give me one good reason why I should never make a change. My, my hidden treasure chest, golden grand piano, my beautiful Castillo. You, ooh, you, ooh, I'd leave it all. Oh, for you, ooh, you, ooh, I'd leave it all. Before I can install the gates, I need to trim the existing rails back a touch to allow room for the hinges.
I've designed these gates with just a 10 millimeter gap between the gates and the existing posts and between each other. So I don't have much room to play with here. I clamp them in place using plastic spacers to get the right gaps in the joints and use a combination of packers and quick clamps to adjust the height. Although I'm using a string line to make sure they're going in level, I fully expect to have to come back to these in a few months time just to adjust them after both the gates and the hinge fixings have settled a touch. Any chrome fixings I also paint black with hammerite to match the hinges and the latch and the ground pin that's just turned up in time from Amazon I also fix to the gates. While you're watching me finish these gates, it's a good time to tell you about Patreon and a new feature for my members. For just £3 a month, you can help support the channel and in return, you not only get access to extra weekly videos purely for patrons, but also you now get an extra length standard weekly video. So for instance, this video that you're watching now for Patreons is three to four minutes longer, including additional behind the scenes tips and tricks and information that's not available to the public. So please, if you like the channel and you want to support us for a very small amount of money per month, give it a go. The link is in the description below. And at any point, if you don't think it's worth the cost of a cup of coffee per month, then it's very easy to stop at any time. Please consider it if you're enjoying these videos. with the salvage tube from the wheelbarrow installed, which is a perfect size to hold the ground pin. Everything is complete. And I must say, I'm really happy with the way it's come out. I will see you in the next video.